It may look like a harmless bagel toaster, but inside is a deadly donut. How do you know PlayStation is not a normal game system? Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. here in a continuing series, the PlayStation 1 Paradise, where I take a look at some of my favorite PlayStation 1 games of all time, both in 3D and in 2D, and if you can't tell already, we have a 2D week going on right now with Gunner's Heaven, which basically feels like a best of hits remix of Metal Slug and Gunstar Heroes, except not having any of the same developers in common. And interestingly enough, this game came out in Japan and Europe, but Sony Computer Entertainment of America had a little bit of a ban on 2D games in the US region, so we never actually got this one back in the day. Before you get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, i got a Patreon link down below as well. But Gunner's Heaven is an absolutely epic 2D side-scrolling run-and-gun game. It does the best things you could possibly want out of the genre. It stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like Gunstar Heroes or Metal Slug, while also having its own unique charm and character. And to be aware, if you're playing the European release, it's going to be called Rapid Reload because they did change the name in different regions. But this is the type of game that is absolutely simple to understand at face value. All you do is run right or left, you get different power-ups, you shoot your gun, and you try to kill your enemy before they kill you. It is the most basic thing on paper, but what actually comes into a real challenge later on in the game is just how many enemies and projectiles are going to be on screen at once. This is the type of game that you need to play through multiple times, memorize, and understand what's expected of you, just like a bullet hell shmup, except you have a lot more control because you obviously are in a 2D platformer, not in a shmup game. I also just love the personality of this as well. All the anthropomorphic animal characters, all the robotics. It's basically like everything in the animal kingdom in this game learned science very early and 100% ran with it, and apparently some of them are also British because that looks like the Union Jack across this robot. But I absolutely love the character design in this game as well. That gigantic three-way jet propulsion system at the bottom undulating around as a sprite, it just 100% looks amazing and works within the context of the game. And the nice thing is too, this game has a lot of verticality. You're not always going to be running left and right. A lot of times you have to scale up the level and you will see we have a grappling hook to aid us in that. Movement tech in this game is absolutely paramount. You need to understand how your character moves, all the different ways you can try to escape projectiles because there's going to be an absolute metric crap ton of them coming towards you. And now we have a gigantic what looks like spider that's able to take up its robotic legs and use them as a separate attack. This definitely has big Metal Slug inspiration because obviously in the world of Metal Slug, so many of the bosses are related to animals, different seafoods, crabs, things such as that. But Gunner's Heaven does all of the same things that Metal Slug does while also feeling like it's its own unique independent game. Game. And I love that every single boss has multiple stages as well. It's like a two to three stage boss fight every single time you find a guardian, and they can be quite challenging. And this game is only going to give you so many continues, and if you fail at a level, you need to move all the way back to the start. So it's definitely going to be something. If you get really good at this game, it might only take you half an hour to beat it, but it might take you 20 hours to actually get good enough to get to that half an hour completion. And that's what I love about a game like Gunner's Heaven. It calls on you to get better at the game. You need to understand the patterns. You need to understand the movement, everything like that. But again, it's just such a gorgeous game as well, and it really does show that the PlayStation 1 could do really good 2D graphics. It's so strange that Sony really didn't want 2D games released in North America, because that's where everyone came from. Of course, 3D was the big hype of the day, but you mean to tell me this wouldn't sell if you put it on a store shelves? Some of the best PlayStation 1 games of all time are definitely 2D. You can't discount Symphony of the Night, and I think Gunner's Heaven would have been a well-remembered game if it actually came out in North America. Now, of course, with import and people learning about the internet, you are able to find out about these games. But back when this game was new, I had absolutely no idea it existed. I only read about it like 20 years ago on some sort of internet forum about great 2D games for the PlayStation that never came to the US. But it's just one of those titles. It's absolutely something you should check out whether you've heard of it or not. But I am curious who's played this before. Leave me a comment down below and tell me about it. And like I said, pattern recognition is huge. If you go too close to this robot, you're going to get hit by all of his shots. But if you back up and duck, you're basically basically invulnerable and you need to learn that within the game. Every single character, every single enemy, every single stage has basically a set pattern that's going to protect you and the sooner you learn that the better because if you just run blindly forward you're going to die over and over again. And I will say this game has a banging soundtrack as well so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll be right back.
I just absolutely love the soundtrack in Gunner's Town, and I'm not going to say it's as good as anything like Metal Slug, but it's definitely one level below that. But you will see here in the area boss, getting the right weapon can 100% make or break your experience. When you have that homing attack in, the elevation that Iguana took basically becomes like a free hit. If you have the wrong weapon going in, you 100% have to face him directly, and that's going to put you in his line of fire. And you'll see here that I have an even stronger homing attack. Trying to get the right weapon and trying to stay alive while you're using it is going to be fundamentally important. And you will see that pretty much every enemy that we kill drops these little power-ups, and there is a power meter at the top. You need to keep that power meter up, or your weapon's going to downgrade, and the game is going to become much more difficult. It's basically like a combo meter in a shmup, except it's not for score, it's for your actual power within the game. But as we take a look at this praying mantis boss right here, you will start seeing a pattern evolve. If we run to the left and duck down when they use that sickle attack, we're going to be invulnerable for it. And if you jump at just the right time here, you can avoid basically everything. There is no situation in this game where you're going to be forced to take damage. The only time you take damage is when you didn't recognize the pattern, like right there, I should have jumped, not slid. It's on you whether or not you're going to play this game well or not. And I love that. It makes you get good at it. And it does have some pseudo shmup elements as well. This section right here is a four side scroller in the horizontal perspective. And you need to knock out all of these different minecarts. Definitely has some dolphin blue vibes as well. Even though I believe this game came out before that game. And obviously minecarts are such a huge thing within the world of video games in and of themselves. It's just a game that mixes things up enough so that when you just feel like you've been running and gunning too much, you get more of this shmup section going on here. Because while you can move around the screen, you can't advance it freely. It is locked and you need to wait through this entire sequence to get to where you're going. And there's going to be some more shmup elements coming up shortly. But again, just look at these colors right here. Everything in this game is an absolute vibe. The graphics, the sprite work, the backgrounds, the pseudo real-time lighting effects. It just really sells the illusion of this being such a living, breathing world as we move further in with that lava glowing in the background this is incredible 32-bit 2d work and that's why i wish sony had allowed more 2d games to actually come out in north america i would have loved to play this back in the day and it's so funny that they were so allergic to 2d in the u.s obviously in japan everyone didn't care whatsoever so you got all of these amazing experiences that we just didn't get here but i will tell you right now the game can sometimes glitch out and force you behind a boss where you're just going to have to take a death it's one thing that i don't love about the game you can get stuck in spots but obviously i told you there was going to be more shmup elements coming up and they are here we get a jetpack and we get to fly through a level now this is probably my least favorite aspect of the game right here it is a shmup and it is fun but it's definitely not anywhere near as good as any other shmup you're going to play on the PlayStation 1, so it's a little bit of a mixed bag. But I want to give you one more sample of the soundtrack, because I do think this is just some absolutely amazing music, and I'll come back and tell you a little bit more history about the game, but enjoy. I will say that the shmup sections can be a little bit unfair, and that's because this isn't the best developed shmup of all time, so there's going to be some patterns and areas of the screen that are just going to 100% screw you over. And there definitely is a story in the game, but if you want it in English, you're going to have to play the PAL version and maybe try to get it to run at 60 frames per second, because I do just like showing the Japanese on screen. I'm not even sure why. But again, this is one of those games that is such a special game. If you like Metal Slug, if you like Gunstar Heroes, if you like Contra and you've never played Gunner's Heaven, you 100% owe it to yourself to check it out. It is fun. It is difficult. It is challenging. It's everything you want out of a game of this era. And if you're in North America like I am, and I'm sure you are because that's where most of my views come from, it is a game that you never even knew existed back in the 90s. I don't remember reading any magazines that mention this for preview. It's just one of those things. I probably found out about it in like 2001 or 2002 just browsing the internet and it came to my attention. It's just a 10 out of 10 game as far as I'm concerned. All of the action, all of the graphics, all of the music, even the intro cutscene here done in engine, just 100% percent works. It's the height of 2D gaming on PlayStation 1 in the 32-bit era. Sure, the Sega Saturn had better 2D artwork, no one's disputing that, but the PlayStation 1 was no slouch either. So if you've never played Gunner's Heaven before, definitely check it out. Leave me a comment down below if you have, and tell me what you think, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.